Hey guys. Well, I said I would do a review when I got my uh, new sword in, and I did. It came in a lot sooner than I thought it would. Um, I got an email from Atlanta Cutlery Museum Replicas Limited about two weeks ago, and they said, you know, would you rather us refund your money back and since we don't have the piece you wanted? Because I guess evidently it wasn't just back ordered, it was it was discontinued. Um, so they sent me an email asking me if I wanted to cancel my order, and I said, no, I still want to keep it. Uh, so I went and I got a different cross guard design than the one I initially wanted to, to go with. But it turned out wonderful. And um, I'll go and explain what the create your own sword thing is at museumreplicaslimited.com. It's a uh, feature where you can get on there and it's kind of like a what you see is what you get, but you can mix and match different pommels and cross guards and grip styles and you get the same blade, um, but you get the choice of it being either mirror polished or, or satin polished. I went with the mirror polished, of course, but um, you get several options in each category and you can kind of mix and match. So you can either come up with like crazy monstrosity or you can kind of go as realistic as possible. And I was kind of upset. This might be a long video, guys, just to let you know. If, uh, maybe I'll put in the, in the marks where the store review begins and where it ends. So I got a lot to talk about. Um, but yeah, I was kind of upset that they had canceled that feature a while ago because I wanted it, the Create Your Own Sword um, program. And I emailed them a long time ago and I said, yeah, we, we canceled it. Uh, but then I noticed about a month or two ago that it was back. And I was like, oh, cool, sweet. So I started saving up. And uh, they're only 188 bucks base for like a sword, and that's it. I could have got the scabbard, but I did some research, and the scabbard isn't the basic windless scabbard that comes with most of their swords. It's actually, wait, I don't know, It's it looked janky, and I didn't want to mess with it. It was extra 80 or something dollars. It brought up the price almost twice as much as what it would have been without it. So I said no to the scabbard. But, um, but yeah, I got it. And actually, I'm going to do some close-ups so I can show you all the neat things. I chose these components to make this sword to look this way. Um, it is a Type 11 style blade, um, according to Oakshot. So it's going to be long. It's going to be around 30 to 33 inches. I don't remember exactly how long it said it is, but it's long. Uh, the fuller is a lot thinner than on the Type 10. And it only goes to about right here, and then it terminates, and then it just goes into the tip. Um, highly scalloped tip, very rounded, very rounded tip, almost more so than the classic medieval sword. Very, very rounded tip. I don't mind. Um, it, my, my mistake, when I first was doing research about this guy, I thought that it was a Type 12 blade, and I've been wanting a twi Type 12 for a long, long time. Um, I thought... Blauer was going to do it. More to say about that. Um, but I just couldn't find one within my price range. Um, and my mistakenly mistook this type of blade for a Type 12. But someone on Sword Buyer's Guide thankfully corrected me and let me know that it was a Type 11, uh, not a Type Type 12. Um, but I love it. And uh, as you can see, the blade's mirror polished. And I did some cutting with the milk jugs with this guy earlier today. And I... It was embarrassingly horrible. I don't even know if I might upload the whole thing. I might just cut little bits and pieces. Um, the sword's incredibly sharp. I'm incredibly horrible at cutting. Um, it's basically what it comes down to. Um, but yeah, they did an excellent job sharpening the sword. Very, very sharp. Cut the paper out of the bag, or out of the box. The cross guard I chose was cross style. Well, this is cross guard V or five. Um, it's kind of like a bow tie almost. The one that I chose was a lot more rectangular and straight. It didn't have the angles here. It was just straight and a bit thicker. It looked more just like cruciform than this one does. Um, but they emailed me and said the piece I wanted was discontinued, so I chose the closest one. The other two, three options, you have a curved one, which I didn't really dig on. The other option was the one that they put on the classic medieval sword, which is also curved. Which I only had a sword that looked like that, so I didn't want that one. And then their third option was the classic medieval sword guard width a block right here where you could put text on there that they could put on there for you. But I already know a guy. So anyway, um, the grip I chose, I went back and looked and it's unavailable now too. So keep checking if this, if you guys want to do this, keep checking and see what you want still there. And you can't tell the color of it, but I chose and it's backlit guys. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, 
that's the cross guard I chose. It's brown and it has four risers kind of equidistant from each other. So there's one here, one here, one here, and one here. Um, actually, they were really cool at Museum Replicas Limited. I chose a different pommel initially and I went back like 10 minutes there. I was like, oh no, I'd rather have this one. And um, they actually got this pommel for me. I think this is a type J according to Oakshot. But about the pommel, it's great. I love it. The peen is wonderful. I mean, not wonderful, but Sometimes I'm too loose with my terms, but you did a good job. It's there and it's a little you know, kind of heat coloring around it, but it's in nice and solid. There's absolutely no rattling. But look, if you notice, this, this, this pommel is massive. It is massive. It's like the size of a microphone almost. I don't care. I don't mind. I really don't mind at all. I think what they had to do was increase proportions of different sizes of things, most likely the, the pommel, to make sure that you don't, I think it says on Swear by the guys, create a complete mess by picking and choosing just random things. Everything's supposed to be able to balance out. Um, but I did notice that there weren't any videos for a sword for Create Your Own Sword for Museum Replicas Limited. There's like a video that's been out for a long time on YouTube where the guy that makes them, I don't know if he still makes them or not, it was a long time ago, describes the process. And um, some other close-up things I noticed. Um, the blade came very nice. <laughs> there were some mark markings. I don't know if you'd be able to pick them up or not. Um, probably not. Because they're not that. Here it is, like right there. There's some like right here. And then if you flip it over in the same spot, there's going to be more markings. And I think what this is is where they put it within the vise and then slammed everything down with the epoxy and let it stand. Um, my opinion is maybe put something in between the actual vise and the sword before you clamp it in. And if they do, maybe check that material, make sure it's not rubbing off. Because there is definitely some clamp marks right here and right here. Minor nitpick. I don't mind at all. It's not that big a deal. Um, I've done worse to my own swords, so it's not that big a deal. Uh, I do really wish that it wasn't so... 10th to 11th, 12th century. I'd rather have something more in between the uh, 10th and the 14th century, like between the I don't know, 13th, 14th, 12th, 13th century, something, where it kind of tapers to a sharper point. I mean, I do love the blade, don't get me wrong, um, but it is long, and it is parallel. The edges are very, very parallel. I did measure the base is a lot wider than the actual tip here, so it does have a little bit of taper, but not much. Another thing I read about the Create Your Own Swords from people online was that it was going to be really, really heavy. They were wrong. They were completely wrong. I don't know if they changed the type of blade or what, but this blade is not heavy at all. I thought it was going to be as heavy as the um, Create Your Own Sword. I'm not, I mean, the, sorry, the um, classic medieval sword, because that thing is heavy. This isn't as heavy. This is much more lithe and nimble. My favorite word to describe swords. Nowhere near as heavy as the uh, classic medieval sword. Um, much, much thinner blade edge. I don't know if you can do it that good, but if you get the, it's much, much thinner profile than the classic medieval sword had. That was a little bit thicker going up, you know. Um, so it's much, much lighter. I think it might be maybe around three pounds, maybe right under three pounds. I don't know. I don't have a thing to weigh it on, so I don't know. I'm guessing. Um, like I said, these are extremely low fi reviews. These are mostly meant to get close-ups of things that you can't find online otherwise. Uh, videos and stuff. So, I know, it's some horrible quality, but this is a create your own sword option. This is the blade you're going to get when you choose create your own sword. Of course, mine is mirror polished. Um, you can get yours satin, um, which does cover up scuff marks if you'd like to cut with it. Like I said earlier, I went cutting with this thing. I, I drove about 20 minutes away to a shooting range, a little kind of little tiny little spot where I could cut completely isolated. And I cut about 20 milk jugs and I did horrible, embarrassing. I can cut this video off. I might edit this video, this one, um, kind of show inner inner cut speak on um, places where I got some decent cuts in, but I suck. Bad. Um, all I can really do about that is practice.
cutting up milk jug. It's going to work at a restaurant and I'm able to snatch him up and save him. Um, fill him full of water and take him out somewhere. To Tommy, I can't afford something like that. I can't afford to Tommy. And they said you could do cheap homemade tatami with soaking newspaper up in your bathtub and, you know, rolled up in a, in a roll. I don't know who reads newspapers anymore. I have not seen a newspaper in a home in at least 10 years. So I don't know where to just buy newspapers unless I'm going to go out and buy a bunch from a machine, which I'm not going to do. That screws people over that actually want to read the newspaper. And I don't know. Anyway, that's, that's beside the point. I have easy access to milk jugs and they're easy to cut and um, they're, they're free to me, which is why I always cut milk jugs. But I sucked really bad today. I have no idea what was wrong. Um, definitely wasn't the sword because it is sharp. Definitely my form. Um, I have no place to really practice. Um, and it's more of a really passing hobby for me. This isn't like something that I'm super passionate about. I've thought about maybe looking into the, into the HEMA community here in, in Dayton a while. Never followed through with it. Um, I, I like to collect swords. I think they look cool. I'm not like a sword fighter. I don't pretend to know how to fight. I don't pretend to know how to stand when I cut. I watch YouTube videos. And I kind of copy what I see. Uh, I'm just being 100% honest here. Um, but this being a review about the create your own sword, um, get it. I think it's a great deal. I think for 188 bucks base, just your palm of your choice, your hand grip, your your cross guard of your choice, and then you get this type type 11 style blade for almost 200 bucks. It's going to be great. I mean, I love it. I'm really glad I got it. I am most definitely going to take it to the guy that I did the previous video on that I uploaded, Tony. He's my he's my laser guy. Hey, you know, I got I got a guy. Um, I'm definitely going to have him put something on here. I just don't know what I want yet. Um, I want it to be something unique. But, um, <clears throat> all right, so that's basically going to be the end of the sword review here. Um, I'm going to go on to some other thoughts about things sword related. Um, but yeah, that's the create your own sword. Oh, one last thing I did notice. <laughs> I don't care. It's a minor nitpick. Some people will probably drive them absolutely nuts. Is that one? And this was upside down in the, in the, in the, um, vice and they slammed this, this thing down onto the tank. It's maybe, I don't know if you can tell or not, it's not exactly center. It is not exactly center with the handle. That might drive some people completely bonkers. I I don't care. I really don't care. This is a $188 sword. Um, and it works, so I like it. Uh, but anyway, that's the end of the, the actual creature of sword, sword review. Um, so if you want to skip the rest of this video, that's fine. I just had some things to talk about when it came to... Um, came to Cult of Athena and Blauer Arms. I w when Blauer Arms first came out, I was extremely happy. I thought I was the first person to ever find them. Um, of course I wasn't, but I was really lucky to be the first first group in to get the uh, first round of the Italian longsword and the um, 15th century arming sword, which have the same blade profile, same blade type. Um, I guess evidently they're on back order. They've been on back order for probably almost a year. I lucked out. Me and whoever got the last ones really lucked out because a lot of stuff has happened behind the scenes uh, at, at Cult of Athena. I guess they changed ownership. I, there's a video out there where the, I guess the new owner put something out. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I could have. I should have. I just haven't yet. Um, but I could tell. <clears throat> like I couldn't tell right off the bat, but I noticed that, man, I, their website was down one day. I was like, oh, that's odd. It was down for a long time, and then we got word through the grapevine, through like swordbuyersguide.com or whatever, uh, the forums there, that they were upgrading their, their website, which I thought was okay. I liked the website. It looked like it came from like 1999 or 2000, which was fine. It was functional. Everything was where you wanted it to, where you knew it was going to be, and it was easy to find. It was easy to, to, um, to like narrow your searches down with certain things. Now the website is a clunky mess. It is all over the place. The photos are really hard to, to sift through. Sometimes they go up, sometimes they go this. And this is on a PC desktop. I haven't even tried to look at it on a, on a, on my mobile. But yeah, the, sometimes the pictures don't load and you can't click back correctly and it takes you out. It is a mess. Um, it's really hard to narrow your searches down now. It tends to refresh, or at least it does for me. 
defined to narrow it down to, you know, medieval swords, battle ready, blah, you know, like it should be bam, bam, bam. I should be able to find that easily, which I was able to. The new website, not so much. And it's been several months now and they've had time and chance to improve. I'm not an IT guy. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not an IT guy. I don't, I don't know how to do websites. I'm not going to pretend like I know how either, but I figure in this day and age, it would be really easy or at least find someone that knows how to do a, a really easy to do website. Um, it doesn't mean I'm not going to purchase from Cult of Athena. I'm still going to purchase from them, of course, but their website thumbs down from me. Um, <clears throat> and then speaking to Belauer Arms, maybe I switched around, I, but Belauer Arms was really awesome because they were supposed to be a joint, you know, mission with Cult of Athena. I think they were like, they had a partnership going on for a while where, you know, they were supposed to, you know, give sword buyers, you know, really good quality product for economy prices. It's really hard to find in the Euro style community. You've got some like Windless, and then you start getting into like, you know, Dark Sword Armory and then Valiant, um, Arms and Armor, Angus Trim up there, and then Albion. It, it, you get better with the higher price you pay. But uh, like me, a lot of my friends that are into this are viewers on a major budget. Um, 200, 250, 300 is about the limit that I can afford and justify a sword on. Um, but Blau was supposed to give us amazing quality for budget price. And for a while there, evidently, they did. When they first came out, I guess their sword, their steel, when they went, they changed from EN45 to 5160. They did have like tempering issues. I know firsthand my second video I ever made. Uh, talked about how wavy my 14th century um, longsword was. I returned it for the Italian one, which was very smart. I'm glad I did that because they're they're impossible to find now, the, the, the Italian longsword. And evidently, Balauer is no longer in partnership with, with Cult of Athena. And on Sword Buyer's Guide, uh, the forum, there was a post someone made where it showed on relics.com a really sweet-looking Type 12 arming sword in the style that Belauer put out that I would have loved right around, I don't know, around 300 and something dollars, 350, maybe something around that, maybe near 400 bucks all total. But, um, it did, it wasn't sold through Cult of Athena, it was sold through Relics. I don't know if Relics does the sharpening through this or not. I have a, you know, Canonian work sharp, work sharp, but I could touch up things already sharpened and I could sharpen that, you know, spearhead. But when it comes to a full sword, I'm not ready to do that yet. Not when it's blunt. Um, so getting it from relics, I, who knows if it will come sharpen or not. And another thing about the, the, the type 12 arming sword that, you know, was on relics.com was the, the, the grip style was just too ovular. It was just too curved for me. I like them, you know, V shaped. And this one was kind of like, like an oval. Some people, that was the whole reason why they loved it. Uh, that to me that turned me off immediately, but it was the blade and and the cross the cross guard style that I really wanted, and the pommel style that I really wanted, which is why I went with this the closest thing I could find. Um, but I don't think that there what we saw what we knew is Belauer Arms for the past year is going to be that in the, in the future anything they release in, in the future under Belauer Arms if they do even release under the name Belauer Arms is not going to be budget price it's going to be up there just the same price as dark sword armory or valiant or you know anything that's in the 300 up price range um which it like totally means i can't i can't play in that and that cool so anyway those are my thoughts about Belar arms the current state of what's going on there and also cult of athena their partnership and cult of athena's website I'm not going to say it's a dark time for the for the industry or anything. I don't know much enough about it to speak to that. But as a cheapo collector who just likes to have fun, it might be sad that that era of that 15th century Italian longsword, that whole era might be over. And I'm extremely, extremely glad that me and whomever else was able to get one, was able to get one. Because unless you get it secondhand, I doubt you're ever going to get it again. So...
they sell like hotcakes at Culpa Zafina. I think once they show up, they're gone within, if not minutes, hours. So good luck if you can find one. Um, and oh well, what can you do? But real quick, going back, if you do want to get the creature and sort for museum replicas, limited or um, Atlanta cutlery or windlass, all the same thing. What you're going to get similar, same blade. So. Alrighty, guys, I think this is my longest video yet. I rambled on. So, uh, I don't know when I'm going to get another sword anytime soon. So, this might be it for a while again, guys. But, um, yeah. I might cut this video up with uh, some edits from when I went and took this guy out. But, for the most part, it was embarrassing. And, yeah. So, you can practice. But, Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your day.